Note that any time I use the word mother, I'm not only talking about women who have given birth or adopted children in this life. I'm speaking about all of our Heavenly Parents' adult daughters. Every woman is a mother by virtue of her eternal divine destiny. So tonight, as the father of ten children, father of ten children, <laughs> nine daughters and one son, and as president of the Church, I pray that you will sense how deeply I feel about you, about who you are and all the good you can do. No one else can do what a righteous woman can do. No one can duplicate the influence of a mother. Men can and often do communicate the love of Heavenly Father and the Savior to others. But women have a special gift for it, a divine endowment. You have the capacity to sense what someone needs and when they need it. You can reach out, comfort, teach, and strengthen someone in his or her very moment of need. Women see things differently than men do. And oh, how we need your perspective. Your nature leads you to think of others first, to consider the effect that any course of action will have on others. As President Iring has pointed out, it was our glorious Mother Eve with her far-reaching vision of our Heavenly Father's plan, who initiated what we call the Fall. Her wise and courageous choice and Adam's supporting decision moved God's plan of happiness forward. They made it possible for each of us to come to Earth, to receive a body, and prove that we would choose to stand up for Jesus Christ now just as we did pre-mortally. My dear sisters, you have special spiritual gifts and propensities. Tonight, I urge you with all the hope of my heart to pray to understand your spiritual gifts, to cultivate, use, and expand them even more than you ever have. You will change the world as you do so. It would be impossible to measure the influence that such women have, not only on families, but on the Lord's Church, as wives, mothers, and grandmothers as sisters and aunts, as teachers and leaders, and especially as exemplars and devout defenders of the faith. This has been true in every gospel dispensation since the days of Adam and Eve. Yet the women of this dispensation are distinct from the women of any other because this dispensation is distinct from any other. This distinction brings both privileges and responsibilities. Thirty-six years ago, in 1979, President Spencer W. Kimball made a profound prophecy about the impact that covenant-keeping women would have on the future of the Lord's Church. He prophesied, much of the major growth that is coming to the Church in the last days will come because many of the good women of the world will be drawn to the Church in large numbers. This will happen to the degree that the women of the Church reflect righteousness and articulateness in their lives, and to the degree that the women of the Church are seen as distinct and different in happy ways from the women of the world." Close quote. My dear sisters, 
You who are our vital associates during this winding up scene, the day that President Kimball foresaw is today. You are the women he foresaw. Your virtue, light, love, knowledge, courage, character, faith, and righteous lives will draw good women of the world along with their families to the Church in unprecedented numbers. We, your brethren, need your strength, your conversion, your conviction, your ability to lead, your wisdom, and your voices. The kingdom of God is not and cannot be complete without women who make sacred covenants and then keep them, women who can speak with the power and authority of God. President Packer declared, we need women who are organized and women who can organize. We need women with executive ability who can plan and direct and administer, women who can teach, women who can speak out. We need women with a gift of discernment who can view the trends in the world and detect those that, however popular, are shallow or dangerous." Close quote. Today, let me add that we need women who know how to make important things happen by their faith and who are courageous defenders of morality and families in a sin-sick world. We need women who are devoted to shepherding God's children along the covenant path toward exaltation, women who know how to receive personal revelation, who understand the power and peace of the temple endowment, women who know how to call upon the powers of heaven to protect and strengthen children and families, women who teach fearlessly. My dear sisters, Whatever your calling, whatever your circumstances, we need your impressions, your insights, and your inspiration. We need you to speak up and speak out in ward and state councils. We need each married sister to speak as a contributing and full partner as you unite with your husband in governing your family. Married or single, you sisters possess distinctive capabilities and special intuition you have received as gifts from God. We, brethren, cannot duplicate your unique influence. We know that the culminating act of all creation was the creation of woman. We need your strength. Attacks against the Church its doctrine and our way of life are going to increase. Because of this, we need women who have a bedrock understanding of the doctrine of Christ and who will use that understanding to teach and help raise a sin-resistant generation. We need women who can detect deception in all of its forms. We need women who know how to access the power that God makes available to covenant keepers and who express their beliefs with confidence and charity. We need women who have the courage and vision of our Mother Eve. My dear sisters, nothing is more crucial to your eternal life than your own conversion. It is converted covenant-keeping women, and I include my dear wife, Wendy, whose righteous lives will increasingly stand out in a deteriorating world and who will thus be seen as different and distinct in the happiest of ways. So today, I plead with my sisters of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to step forward 
Take your rightful and needful place in your home, in your community, and in the kingdom of God more than you ever have before. I plead with you to fulfill President Kimball's prophecy, and I promise you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that as you do so, the Holy Ghost will magnify your influence in an unprecedented way.